G'day, I'm Ted Jedmack. I don't have time to explain why, it just is. Welcome to today's Triple T TV show, Ted's Tips on Tuesday. In today's Triple T TV show, you'll discover how to get better pain res relief results by employing a sexy secret. Oh, what? Can we use that term? Well, we have used it, and <laughs> the uh, uh, live feed actually already crashed when I mentioned that last time. So let's see if we get to make it through this time. You see, this secret is so sexy, I'm not sure how today's show will go. I wonder whether it'll be banned by the Facebook Vice Squad. I mean, who knows what their algorithms are going to do. All right, the coast is clear at the moment, but at any time, we could get the plug pulled on this episode. And that's because today we're going below the belt. In the name of science, of course. Uh, rest assured, just to be totally transparent, I am wearing trousers. And because today's show is a little more intimate than previous ones, let me tell you something about me just to put you, your mind at ease. Well, I hope it'll do that. Someone else who's uh, pretty much at ease here is uh, Penny Lee, making herself uh, very much uh, at home. You see, I'm part of a dedicated group of health practitioners who are passionate about fixing more feet through manual therapies. And we've been doing this since 1994. Hola, Manuel! We know we've been doing this for quite some time together. Yes, I've been utilising manual therapies for over 22 years, so I've had a fair bit of experience. I've seen what works and what doesn't, and I'm dead keen on shortcutting your path to getting even better clinical results. So if you're a physio, chiro, podiatrist, podologist, uh, an osteopath, a physical therapist, and you're interested in fixing more feet, then welcome, you're in the right place. Thanks for joining me live here from my office in South Australia. It's fantastic to be reaching out to the global community of foot fixers, particularly all of those way over in Brazil. Now, in last week's uh, Triple T TV show, it was all about Achilles tendinopathies. Wasn't it, Penny? Yeah, maybe it was. And uh, I think uh, cats have uh, Achilles tendons too. So, in last week's show, I announced that I was going to dive into neuromas. And that was going to be the topic of today. But I was working on an article for the UK Podiatry Journal, Podiatry Now, and it got me quite excited. All right, I'm just going to keep myself tidy. And so, look, I thought, why not share the love? In a platonic way, of course. And that's why I'm going to make today's show about a crucial topic that can have significant impact on pain relief. And it can also be distracting. Watch this. Ready? Amazing what high-tech toys like scrunched up paper can do. <laughs> so today's show is all about the science behind getting quicker pain relief by focusing on a rather controversial part of client's anatomy. And that's what we'll be investigating in today's Triple T TV show. We're looking beyond the feet today in order to get the clinical outcomes your patients, your clients demand of you. You know, when I graduated from university, I had some tools in my toolkit to fix feet, but I quickly discovered that it was about probably 60% of the job and it wasn't so much what I did to the patient's feet, it was something else. Well, let me explain. As you probably know, when you're a health practitioner, you have to learn how to communicate with patients at the other end of the feet, because there's usually someone attached to those feet, isn't there? I mean, for starters, a patient has to be willing to bring their feet into your clinic, right? Now, if a patient turns up without their feet, well, it's going to be a little bit tricky. I'm not sure if you've had that experience. Um, anyway, then the patient has to take a leap of faith and agree to at least give your treatment service a shot. So you need to know how to quickly and effectively build rapport, gain trust, 
and engage your clients. Now, Manuel, you had this experience in Brazil, but I see now you're in Portugal. <laughs> okay, um, baklava, no, not baklava, it's uh, bacalao, bacalao, that's it, my memory's working a little bit here. Okay, so as health practitioners, there's a myriad of ways that we as health practitioners, we need to coach, we need to counsel, we need to instruct our clients so that they can get the best results. And we need to know how to put patients at ease so that they feel comfortable discussing their progress with us. For some practitioners, this sort of relationship building with their patients it comes naturally. For other practitioners, having a great bedside manner, so to speak, it's a learned skill. For me, I had to learn about it. Even though I thought I was a people person, I was a bit shy when it came to stepping into the role of being an educator. Now, I know that might sound a little bit hard to believe now, but you know, some patients, they would be so open about everything. You'd get their personal history, as well as you know, about their past lives. Uh, I mean, their current living life, not their past lives. Um, or they'd uh, tell you about other parts of their body and they have no, absolutely no bearing on their foot problem they presented with. Uh, I'll never forget uh, old Mrs. Oh, let's call her Mrs. B uh, for confidentiality reasons. She consulted with me for a, a number of years. As soon as she sat down in the treatment chair, she'd tell me every single niggle that she'd had since I'd last seen her. She'd also tell me about the various fungal complaints in parts of her body that I had no business knowing about. I tell you, uh, the visuals were quite shocking. <laughs> oh, cancel, cancel, it's coming back, I'm being infected again. Okay, but, you know, that's just how some patients roll. They're open, they're trusting, they're communicative. Maybe you're perhaps a little bit too communicative. Have you ever had a patient like that? If you have had someone tell you stuff that you just thought was not appropriate or you didn't need to know, just send a thumbs up across the screen and or type in a comment in the box below. <laughs> because um, I'm sure if uh, you'd had a chance to share a few of those stories at uh, you know, the local pub or the local bar, uh, there have been some fairly hair-raising moments, no doubt. But then you get to the other end of the scale. You get patients who are the complete opposite. Like getting information out of them, it's like getting blood out of a stone. They can be very hard to read. They kind of keep everything close to their chest. So as a health practitioner, you need to learn how to employ all sorts of communication strategies to coach, uh, to teach, maybe even counsel, and lead your clients to getting the best possible outcomes for your service. Now this is important to understand because it has a significant bearing on today's topic. And that is about how to get quicker pain relief by focusing on a rather controversial part of the client's anatomy. Uh, in fact, today's topic is all about foot pain and dangly bits. Now, I'm not sure if I've spelled dangly right. If uh, you think there's another way to spell dangly, um, maybe you can just type that in for me. My uh, spell check didn't quite work when I got onto that. You see, in my quest to take my knowledge and skills and expertise to the next level, I went to a conference that featured Associate Professor David Butler. He's director of the Neuroorthopedic Institute. Uh, he's co-author of uh, the great text, Explain Pain. Uh, it was published in 2003, republished in uh, 2013. And he's also authored 45 papers. Have you ever heard of David Butler? Have you ever come across his work? If you have, just give me a thumbs up or a smile uh, along the page here. <laughs> oh, Sounds like we've got some, oh yes. So uh, Penny, she's just saying, yes, you've been talking about, banging on about Butler all week. So uh, she's just confirming that. If you haven't had the awesome pleasure of meeting David Butler, then you're in for a treat. Uh, Butler's presentation on foot pain and joint pain literally started like this. He said, saying that joint pain comes from joints is like saying that love comes from your genitals. Well, I can tell you, David had my full attention right there. 
It's like, what? What do you mean joint pain doesn't come from joints? I think my head did a couple of 360 turns, almost uh, doing an audition for The Exorcist. Joint pain comes from joints, doesn't it? Well, according to Butler, no. Joint pain does not come from joints. Butler went on to validate his claims by confirming that everything in biology can change. In fact, every body, yours, mine, everybody that you know, their body is constantly changing. And his claim that joint pain doesn't come from joints is based on credible neuroscience evidence. You see, the brain, it receives input from the joints. But the interpretation of that input is done at the brain. The brain then generates a pain reception experience. Now, if you get nothing else from today's show, that's something that's worth being mindful of. A pain reception experience. Now, the reason why pain, relieving pain perception and pain reception experiences is related to your genitals is the biological fact that pain reception is a multi-nodal experience in the brain. So different parts, different nodes of the brain all work to combine and create this pain reception experience. Pain reception and its interpretation is not isolated to just one solitary specific area of your brain. I mean, have a look at this brain map. Now, if you look closely, right here, see where my finger is? That shows the correlation between where in the brain foot perception is and where genitals perception is. Yeah, notice <laughs> how closely they are related physically. You can see that they are, because they're immediately adjacent to each other, the brain then has a strong connection between interpreting input from your genitals and relating it or connecting it to what's going on at the foot level as well. There's a direct neurological connection in the brain to foot pain and the genitals. This was a mind shift with me, let me tell you. I never got taught anything like this uh, in my university training. So how do we apply this understanding to relieve foot pain as foot fixes? How do we go about using that? Well, Butler's message is this. As part of your patient's treatment for their foot pain, you need to enhance the multinodal experience within your patient's brain. The most effective way to do this is to get your patients doing something they love as part of their treatment and recovery. In other words, to maximize the body's healing capacities, make sure that your patients are also doing something that they truly love. In other words, we must do what I was chatting about earlier in the show. We must look beyond our patient's feet and consider the person that's attached to them at the other end. See, fixing feet has just as much, if not more, to do with how we engage, support and guide the whole person on their road to recovery. David Butler's outstanding work highlights this crucial idea. It highlights how we as health practitioners can really make a profound impact on our patients' lives. So let me extrapolate on Butler's work a bit further, and given how important it is. Sometimes patients can't do the very thing they love because of their pain or injury. Pain restricts or limits or even completely stops them from pursuing a sporting or leisure activity that they love. I mean, how many golfers do you see who can no longer play a full round of 18 holes? How many runners have stopped running? How many dancers do you know are restricted by the pain that they experience? You see, patients can feel demoralized, even depressed, because they can't do the very thing that they love doing. Well, according to Butler and according to neuroscience, 
This is not helpful for their healing. So as practitioners in the role of educator, coach or counselor, take your pick, it's crucial that we encourage patients to do something that they truly love. They've got to find a substitute if you like. It doesn't matter what a patient does as long as they really love it. It might be you know, walk on the beach, it might be dancing, it might be admiring a fine piece of art. In fact, I recently saw a documentary with um, Sir Bob Geldof, and he was chatting about how choral music literally moves him to tears. Therefore, if he was my client, choral music would be part of his treatment plan. Our job as practitioners is to identify what is the thing that our patient loves and then advise them to include it in their overall recovery. <laughs> now, if that involves their genitals, well, I'm going to let you work out how you're going to have that conversation. I haven't got any advice for you there. But recently, I was um, reading the, the local weekend paper, and there was an article on uh, one of my favourite uh, Australian rules football team, the Mighty Adelaide Crows. Uh, it caught my eye. And it was about one of their young gun players, Rory Atkins, and he sustained in the previous year a, a pretty serious knee injury. He was out for most of the year. While the uh, club development manager was driving Rory to one of his specialist appointments, Rory mentioned his love of horses. Nothing to do with football, it was just something he loved. So uh, Emma, his uh, manager, arranged for Rory to do some work around the thoroughbred stables. Listen to what uh, Rory had to say about this. Uh, he said, uh, yeah, oh, I loved it. And from the very first day, I thought, how good is this? It took my mind off the injury and football for a while, and being at the stables to watch the sun come up was pretty cool. <laughs> Here's a quote. So you can clearly see how doing something that he loved helped with his recovery, taking his mind off it, focusing on uh, actually the neuroscience and what that does within uh, the body, the brain, the biochemistry to actually help his progress. Uh, I I'll always remember Margaret. Um, she was a patient uh, with uh, a classic Halix limitus uh, case and uh, a lot of arthritic wear and tear in the big toe joint. She was probably in late 40s at the time. This had resulted from uh, years of modern dance. Uh, she just lived for dance. That, that was her thing, her passion. When Margaret came to see me, she was absolutely devastated, possibly even clinically depressed. And that was because she was no longer able to dance. Now, at the time, I had no understanding of neurophysiology or pain reception experiences. But in our conversation, I suggested to Margaret that uh, maybe she contact a friend who was a dancing teacher. Now, Margaret ended up working with a school of young dancers as they pursued their passion. The change in Margaret was amazing. All of Margaret's lights came on, particularly when, when, you know, as soon as she started talking about what she was doing and what she, how she was mentoring these new dancers, it transformed her whole perspective on her life and on her condition and what she was capable and able to do. Yeah, I suppose this could be a bit flippantly perceived as, you know, for every cloud there's a silver lining, but it's much deeper than that. And now the science explains it. It's about supporting a patient along their road to recovery in a respectful and meaningful way. Have you ever helped a patient like Margaret pursue a passion despite their foot problem? If you have, let, please let me know in the comments box below or give me a, a thumbs tick or oh, that would deserve a great smile, no doubt. If you've been able to contribute to someone's life help them connect with something they love to do and whatever it was you did or how you did it it would be great for the foot fixing family to hear your story so please type it in okay now with every triple t tv show there's always a takeaway tip today's tip from ted is to identify and include something that your patient truly loves and incorporate it into their recovery and treatment. So at this point, you might be asking, well, how can we do that? Well, during a consultation, 
we need to spend a little time asking quality questions to find out what our clients really love. So what do I mean by quality questions? It might be something like, um, what is your all time favorite movie? So that's kind of steering away from uh, their, um, you know, part of your typical consult questions, but what is your, let me ask you, what is your all time favorite movie? One of my great uh, <laughs> obsessions, some might say, is the um, actual Born uh, Identity, Born series movies. Love them, read the books, uh, seen the movies. Uh, we have a bit of a Christmas tradition where we just veg out and watch all of the movies. Now there's four, even five of them. Uh, but that, I just love it. And it's great. Every time, he always gets the bad guys and he always makes it to the end. So that's uh, truly heroic. Another quality question might be, What's your all-time favorite comedy? Now, and laughter is great. We all know laughter is a great medicine. Um, I remember I, I, it was uh, 2007, I actually fractured my spine uh, and I was uh, laid up, um, literally, um, yes, literally laid up for quite some time. And a good friend, uh, Tito, um, helped me with my recovery because he brought in uh, all of the Seinfeld DVDs. And so <laughs> I love to laugh. And so there I spent a lot of time lying on my back watching all the Seinfeld episodes and cacking myself. I like it. It hurt like heck too, um, as you might be able to imagine with uh, a fractured spine. But anyway, it certainly, I have no doubt that it improved my uh, recovery no end. Uh, another question might be, what do you like to totally geek out on? Like, what are your favorite um, Google searches? Like, if I go online and I'm you know, just wasting, I'm not wasting some time, I'm doing something that I love, I will look up uh, YouTube searches and car reviews. I will happily explore all sorts of uh, cars or reviews, and I've got my, you know, like Top Gear is a favorite show, so it might be a bit of a, a boy thing there. What about you? What's your favorite? What do you love to geek out about? Uh, it might not be the latest research on uh, the uh, neurophysiology of foot-related disorders, or it might be, but what are the things that you love geeking about? Come on, Jackie, you can type it in, let me know. Um, I've, uh, what about uh, another quality question is, you can ask people about what's their most inspirational book? Um, I love books that are stories on uh, overcoming adversity. I'm currently reading, uh, this book right here, Finding Gobi. So it's uh, an incredible story, a true story about this little mutt of a dog. Uh, and uh, he's, uh, he's named Gobi because uh, he was uh, found in the uh, Gobi Desert, so Mongolia, uh, China region, uh, by this uh, uh, Scottish um, runner who's an ultra marathon runner. And this little dog uh, ends up literally tracking him for hundreds of miles and, and this guy's um, now you know, find him they lose him uh, it's quite a story but for me it's a very inspirational story so key thing to take away uh, from today is having quality questions that you can ask your clients to find out what they truly love uh, in fact in today's freebie uh, what you're going to get uh, is uh, a list of the uh, quality questions that you can ask to find out what your clients truly love. But what if your client says something like, the only thing in my whole world that I love doing is running, or you know, whatever the activity was uh, that they can no longer do, and that's why they've come to see you. Maybe it's the activity, like if it is running, they've got to stop doing that to you know, recover and facilitate um, their rehab. You see, this type of emotional or reactive response is not uncommon. So how do you respond to that? Any ideas? You uh, type them in. How would you respond to someone if they said, this is the only thing I love doing, and if you can't fix me, you know, maybe they head off in a huff, or maybe you can just sense that they're not happy with what um, advice or recommendations you're giving them. When I'm faced with that type of situation, I would be going along the lines of um, sympathizing with them, but then working to kind of redirect their focus. And it might be something like, uh, hey, Dan, I can appreciate uh, um, how important this year's fun run is to you and the new uh, time record that you want to set. But tell me, what did you do 
for fun before you took up running. Or it might be, uh, Dan, are your kids interested in running? Could you mentor them with their running or with their sports? Uh, maybe it'd be something like, Dan, do you know a running group that needs some help or coaching or assistance? You see, getting your clients to focus on the value that they could contribute to other runners or kids or you know, people interested in their uh, particular passion, that's something that I've found is particularly useful. People usually love the feeling of contributing or adding to other people's lives. A bit like what I mentioned to Margaret early on in the dances. So, hey, look, if you've just uh, joined us, uh, we've had a terrific show today. It's all been all about how we can relieve our clients' pain more effectively. Uh, so far, we've discussed um, how the role of your client's genitals and what that role it has in relation to their pain experience. Uh, we've discussed the neuroscience of the pain reception experience. Uh, we've discussed the science of how doing what you love significantly improves the pain that you and your clients experience. Uh, we've acknowledged that the neuroscience work of Associate Professor David Butler helped us dramatically in understanding how we can help our clients feel better quicker. Uh, and then I gave you some of Ted's tips on the questions that you can ask to help your clients in their recoveries. <laughs> Phew, what a show. I can't wait to watch it. Um, yeah, yeah, I'll be watching on the replay. So anyway, as uh, with all Triple T TV shows, I'm going to give you a summary of Ted's tips so you can download them and have some additional resources to help you help more people like never before. Uh, today's fabulous freebie, it has the full list of quality questions all mapped out here uh, and what you can do uh, in helping people find out and identify what extracurricular activity uh, you could recommend your clients to do to aid their recoveries. Uh, I've also included the questions that um, if they get stuck, if uh, your clients are in a rut uh, and they're kind of refusing to uh, consider other possibilities or what they'll do, a list of questions that you can pursue uh, with them right there. Plus, I've also included uh, the link to uh, David Butler's uh, YouTube channel. Uh, this is the Neuro Orthopedic Institute channel. There are dozens of excellent neuroscience videos there that can help you uh, dive into the science of uh, what uh, is going to uh, assist you with your helping and getting better pain relief results for clients. So. Ted's takeaway tip from today's Triple T TV show is this. Identify and include something your patient truly loves into their recovery and treatment. I, I can tell you, watch your patient's lives blossom as a result of this important approach to patient management. If you've got any questions, please type them in. I'll be only too happy to help you out here. Hey, uh, in next week's show, uh, we're going to be coming to you live from Melbourne. Yes, uh, yesterday we decided to take a trip to the Big Smoke and do some of the things that Dr. Lil and I love doing. It's things like shopping. Well, that might be more of Lil's passion. Uh, whining and dining. Uh, live concerts. And... Going to the footy to see the mighty Adelaide Crows. <laughs> you see, we're really taking this show to heart and practicing what we preach. Uh, by the way, how can you bring more of what you love into your life and the lives of those you love? I know many practitioners love fixing feet, but what about other activities? What do you love doing that really supports your health and well-being? Is it a hobby like photography? Uh, are you an avid cyclist? Um, do you enjoy a great movie? Do you love to coach your kids sports team? Do you enjoy cooking up a storm in the kitchen on the weekends? Do you enjoy getting your hands into the dirt and the earth in the garden? Whatever you love, I hope you too will get to enjoy that this coming weekend. 
Let's compare notes on the next Triple T TV show. We could have a love fest. <laughs> or invent uh, our own version of Burning Man or Woodstock or uh, maybe not. But anyway, um, anyway, you, you won't want to miss next week's show. Uh, in next week's show, we're going to be diving into Morton's Neuroma. Uh, and we're going to be discussing the work of another outstanding health practitioner, Dave Cashley, based in Scotland in the UK. I've had the great pleasure of uh, chatting with Dave. Uh, he is an expert in manual therapies treatment, particularly for Morton's Neuroma. So I'm really looking forward to bringing his great work to the show. So thank you very much for joining me today. Uh, let me know what you think of today's show. It's been a huge episode. I'd love to hear your thoughts about it. Have you found it useful? If you haven't already liked this page, uh, the Facebook page, Foot Mobilization Techniques, then please do so. If you know a colleague who'd also love to get even better client outcomes with frustrated or unhappy clients, then please share this Facebook post with them. And just a reminder about the fabulous freebie. This freebie you can download. Uh, it'll either be uh, above my head, if, this, if you're watching a replay, or it may be down below uh, in the top post uh, on uh, the comments section. Please make sure you join me for next Tuesday for Triple T TV. There's my mate Matt Rimmer on the Gold Coast in uh, sunny Queensland. He's got this bumper sticker saying, if you want to stay ahead, catch up with Ted. So thank you for being part of today's show. Thank you too, to Dr. Lil. Woohoo! Woo yeah, there's a woohoo uh, for all that you contribute to bringing today's quality show content. Thank you very much. Um, I look forward to showing you my tips again next week. Oh, luckily that's out of uh, screen view. <laughs> It's been a blast chewing the fat with you today. I hope you have had a cracking good time. Until next week, same back time, same back channel, but from a city uh, about 800 kilometres here in Melbourne, Victoria. Until then, take your skills to the next level and fix more feet like never before. Cheers. <laughs>